This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Round one of the 2024 NFL Draft is finally here. Coming up tonight, all the speculation, all the consternation, all the bickering, finally wrapping up. We can get these picks on the board over on uh, FanDuel Sportsbook. What we're going to do today is break down last-minute NFL Draft bets that I like over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Most of the final mocks are out for key guys like Daniel Jeremiah, Peter Schrager, Lance Zierlein, Dave Brugler. So we can kind of look through those and try to pick up on any lingering value that is available at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. So we'll dive in. Got about four or so bets I like for today. We'll go through those, why I like them, and uh, any others I might consider if markets change throughout the day. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on the Covering the Spread podcast, even Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever you get your podcasts on, you can find us there. Just search for Covering the Spread. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as always. NFL fans, gear up for the upcoming season with YouTube TV's best offer of the year. Save up to $215 when you bundle NFL Sunday ticket with YouTube TV. Catch every out-of-market Sunday afternoon game with NFL Sunday ticket, along with every local and nationally televised game on over 100-plus live channels with YouTube TV. Don't miss out. Offer ends May 16th. Visit NFLSundayTicket.com today. NFLSundayTicket.com for that. Offer provided by YouTube TV up to $215 off. 170 off NFL Sunday ticket plus $15 off your first three months of YouTube TV ends on May 16th, 1159 p.m. Pacific excludes digital only games, new users only terms and embargoes apply. No refunds again, NFL Sunday to get more information. Let's take a look here at the markets over at FanDuel Sportsbook and let you know where I'm seeing value for today in the first round of the NFL draft. We're going to start things off with one that kind of bums me out because a couple of weeks ago, or last week, I think, I took Byron Murphy to go inside the top 10. And at the time, that was three to one. And I felt pretty good about that because there was a lot of steam around Murphy potentially going to the Bears, going to the the Falcons, and teams like that, all inside the top 10. It had moved to, I think, like minus 135 earlier on this week. But if you look at the final mock drafts, drafts for all the key guys I discussed, He's not going inside the top 10, at least in most of them. Uh, looking at the key mock drafts, Dave Brugler does have him going ninth to Chicago, so that's encouraging there. But Daniel Jeremiah hasn't going 18th, Peter Schrager 15th, Lance Zierlein 16th. All three of those are over 14 and a half, which is plus 188 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. So a bit of a bummer here to see this happening because I like him a lot, uh, but Those mocks seem to have pushed him down the board, not necessarily because they seem like the NFL is low on him, but because there is a lot of steam around offensive linemen, wide receivers, and potentially even quarterbacks. And there's only so many top 14 picks to go around. It's hard to fit every defensive player inside that top 14. So we're getting plus 188 on Byron Murphy over 14 and a half draft slot. Even though three out of the four, I think most key, I would say mock drafts all have him going over that number. So it does bum me out. I thought I felt pretty good about that Murphy top 10 bet at three to one. Maybe that does still wind up cashing. Maybe it does go to the Bears or the Falcons. But uh, with the way the mock drafts, drafts went last night, definitely not feeling as good about that right now as I was before. So we're going to take Murphy over 14 and a half plus 188 based on those most recent mock drafts. Second prop I like for tonight is also one that is a bit intriguing because it's a guy who a lot of people love throughout this entire process, but maybe slipping a bit in drafts. That's Roma Dunze. Over eight and a half for him is currently plus 124 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And there had been some buzz yesterday that the NFL might not be as high in a Dunze as the public was. We saw that in mock drafts yesterday, and then we saw it in all the key mocks released last night and today across the four mocks only dean brugler had a dunze inside the top five or inside the top eight he had him going six uh daniel jeremiah was 10th peter schrager and lance zerlein both had him ninth so if the bears stick at pick nine and take a dunze there which is a somewhat likely outcome then we would wind up cashing this over a plus 124 because the bears pick ninth 
you know, there's obviously a risk here because the Chargers at five need a receiver, the Giants, Titans, Falcons, all at least some need. And there's only, you know, two guys between Harrison and neighbors to go between those those four teams plus the Cardinals. So there are a lot of ways that this bet could wind up not happening. But based on the tackles coming off earlier than expected, potentially all the quarterback buzz with potentially four quarterbacks inside the top 10 still, again, you run out of spaces to plug a Dunze inside this top eight. So we're getting plus money on over eight and a half, plus 124 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Based on those mocks and based on the interesting buzz yesterday, I do feel like the over here is very much in play at plus 124. Nothing against a Dunze personally. I think that he's a very fun player and a lot of people I respect like him a lot. It's more so just fitting in the puzzle pieces, seeing him go above this number in the mocks. That leads me to taking the over on a Dunze at plus 124. Looking around elsewhere, This one, if you're looking for like a fun prop for tonight, is one I don't mind. That's the Los Angeles Rams to draft a quarterback, which is currently 12 to 1 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And a lot of the buzz around this is coming from the exact same place, specifically ESPN, seems to be pretty high on the Rams drafting a quarterback because we saw Adam Schefter release his piece last week talking about how, or this week, about how uh, Les Snead has ties to Bo Nix's dad. And then Field Yates's most recent mock had Bo Nix going to the Rams specifically at pick 19. Mel Kuyper Jr. also mentioned the Rams could be in play for a quarterback during his intel on Thursday morning. So it all comes from the same network but probably running in different circles to get their information. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, If you look at specific team numbers, Knicks is also eight to one to be drafted by the Rams specifically, but taking the 12 to one number allows us to potentially cash. Should they take Michael Penix? I also think that they'd be a fun team to trade up for JJ McCarthy. Uh, Every scheme fit thing says that McCarthy be a good fit for a McVay Shanahan esque scheme. So That's kind of fun at 12 to one for the Rams. We know Matthew Stafford has had a lot of injury concerns up there in age. It's pretty intriguing. We finally get Sean McVay in the first round. That's kind of fun as well. I initially thought receiver would be the play here, but that was, uh, was 18 to one at one point. It's now down to five to one. And that to me is a bit too short, given that the mock drafts released overnight Wednesday into Thursday morning. Didn't really make that link. I kind of thought they could use some speed at receiver with Cooper cup and injury concern, Puka Nakua, doing a lot of great stuff, but not being a a real field stretcher. Just haven't seen a lot of buzz around that. If receiver were to lengthen beyond five to one, I'd probably need closer to like eight to one or so to bite. But with where things stand right now, I really do like Rams to take a quarterback first with their first pick. That is 12 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook based on the connections to Nick specifically, but also because uh, they just in general could be in play for quarterback given where their team stands right now. Final one that I want to mention as far as like things I'm looking to lock in right now. I think that JC Latham is a fascinating guy because uh, Latham was as long as 13 to one to be the first offensive lineman drafted just a couple of days ago. I took that when that was there and I feel pretty good about that number, but there is still a bit of a paranoia because I don't really know what the Chargers are going to do with the Chargers straight out of the fifth overall pick. I feel a lot less good about this. But I think we can still get exposure to Latham via the fifth overall pick market specifically. He is plus 320 to be the fifth overall pick. And Dane Brugger did not have him there, but Daniel Jeremiah, Peter Schrager, and Lance Zierlein all did. So that's enticing. Right now, Latham is plus 130 to be the first offensive lineman drafted, but he's plus 320 to go fifth overall. And the reason I think that there is, I think that's odd, is that the Chargers are a very specific fit for J.C. Latham. They seem to want a guy who is a mauler, a guy who can be a force in the run game. He can play right tackle, which allows him to keep Rashawn Slater at left tackle, where he is he has shown flashes of being an elite level player. I'm not sure how well Latham fits with other teams, though, who may go offensive line early on, because you look at the Titans. I think they're more of a Joe Alt team. They could use a left tackle alongside Peter Skaronsky, lock down that left side. Whereas the Chargers, I think specifically maybe in the market for a guy was shown, he can be a beast at right tackle. So there are a lot of paths to this bet not cashing. We talked to Dr. Ed Feng on Tuesday. He was talking about how it's kind of odd the Chargers are not linked to receiver, given all the receivers they've traded. I agree with that. Um, so they could go receiver. And I think that one of the key mocks he'd have them going receiver as well. They could take Joe Alt. They could move Slater around, whether to guard or right tackle. They could trade down. 
But I think that's accounted for in this number, and that's why I want this specific market with Latham rather than, I mean, the Chargers' first overall pick to be a, a lineman is not posted at FanDuel Sportsbook, so uh, I can't do that. But we get here in three out of the four mock drafts. The implied odds are 23.8%. I am fine taking a swipe here because I do feel pretty good about that number specifically. And I want exposure to Latham to go high in the draft, but I don't think the first offense lineman market is the best way to do so right now. So we'll take Latham at plus 320 to be the fifth overall pick. So the ones based on the mock drafts that I like are JC Latham, fifth overall pick plus 320. The Rams take quarterback at 12 to one. I like Roma Dunze over eight and a half plus 124 and Byron Murphy over 14 and a half. That is plus 188 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Did want to mention a couple of other things that I at least have my eye on throughout the day for today. Not up at FanDuel Sportsbook right now is the Jets first position of their draft pick. I'm not really sure why that's down currently, but I do find it enticing uh, because I think the Jets are probably going to be going wide receiver, at least based on um, based on speculation we've seen about potentially a trade up for the New York Jets. It sounds like they've been linked to Malik neighbors at times. So maybe the Jets trade up to get a wide receiver. Maybe they trade up for Roma Dunze to try to appease Aaron Rodgers. I disagree with that philosophy. And I think that um, uh, their, their OC or their, their, uh, their GM Joe Douglas is a guy who loves to build up in the trenches. So I'm not fully sold on that, but I also don't need to be fully sold in order to justify taking the Jets. They were four to one last night to draft a wide receiver. Again, not currently posted. If the Jets do go back up and you can get four to one plus 350 somewhere in there for the Jets to take a receiver, I'd be very intrigued by that. So I keep eyes on the Jets as a potential team to add later on. Other two bets I want to mention are bets that actually... We got intel on this later or earlier on this week. That was from Tom Pelissero. And if you're listing out like guys I trust for NFL breaking news, not specifically to the draft, but just in general, NFL breaking news, Tom Pelissero is like number two ish behind Adam Schefter. I think Schefter's one for sure. Pelissero is definitely up there. And he's my definite, my number one guy at NFL Network as a guy I trust. And Every year, Palacero does this like guys who could be surprised first round picks and puts out that piece earlier on the week. And his hit rate is pretty good. The two guys whose odds have not moved enough or I'm no longer considering them are Keon Coleman plus 340 and Junior Colson at four to one. Coleman, the receiver out of Florida State, did not run well at the combine, but that was pretty expected. We've also had research. I know uh, uh, our colleague here, uh, our old colleague here at FanDuel, JJ Zacharyson, has done research showing that 40 time doesn't correlate as well to success at receiver as it does a running back. So you can see receivers who do well despite a slow 40 time. And Coleman apparently had good GPS numbers during the gauntlet drill, similar to Puka Nakua last year. Now, I think it could be very in vogue to go, like, hey, this guy's slow. He could be Puka Nakua. But we saw Pelissero mention that in his piece from talking to NFL executives. So Coleman is plus 340. There are a lot of teams that could need a receiver towards the back end of the draft. I think the Chiefs are probably going to wind up going tackle, uh, but they did go Xavier Leggett in a couple of those key mock drafts. Leggett is plus 125 to be a first rounder. I can't quite get there. He was also in Pelissero's piece, but Keon Coleman, that I could be more intrigued by, given he did have the fast GPS times, given that he was in Pelissero's piece. There are a lot of teams that are going to need wide receiver, both early and late. I think that's enough to justify taking a swipe at Coleman at plus 340. As for Colson, uh, just a, a defensive player. Obviously, we probably are going to see a lot of offense here, but Colson played very well for Michigan this past year um, and you know, could just wind up sneaking into the first round based on all of that. Uh, obviously, a very talented player. I don't think we're going to see the Chargers trade up to get him. I know there's been a lot of buzz about them taking a lot of Michigan guys, but just based on Pelissero's piece, based on my trust in him as a reporter and my trust in his hit rates, I'm going to take Colson at four to one to go inside the first round. So Coleman plus 340, Colson four to one, the two bets I'm going to make there based on uh, that piece by Pelissero earlier on this week where things have not moved enough to scare me off there just yet. Other markets going back up here right now. Um, just checking out the these now before we log off. Uh, will the Cardinals trade their fourth overall pick before the selection is made? Plus 250 uh, is yes right now. I don't see any value there personally. 
Will the Chargers trade their fifth overall pick before the selection is made? Yes, is minus 112. That was plus 280 earlier on this week. Uh, so that's definitely moved, which does make me a bit uncomfortable about the Latham number because I don't think he'll go there if they don't pick. But that's minus 112 for yes to trade, plus 320 for Latham to go fifth overall specifically. So still feel okay about that, despite the fact uh, the Chargers now, even money basically, coin flip, trade down that fifth overall pick. And I think it would make sense for them to trade. Part of the reason I think that we've seen a bit less movement there is that uh, Drake may seems to be more locked into the third overall pick, which may lower the incentive for teams trade up to try to get to, to Drake may sounds like the incentive movement from McCarthy might not be as big. So hopefully if may goes third overall, as it looks like he may right now, then maybe that increases the odds of chargers stick at five and decide to take JC Latham there. That's all we got for today and previewing this NFL draft. It has been a fun process talking draft with all of you throughout the past couple of months. We'll see how things play out for tonight in the NFL draft. Back with you once again tomorrow. I'll be talking about uh, NFL draft takeaways. If there are any big trades last night, any second round markets I want to uh, check out. We'll talk about those all in tomorrow's show. We'll talk some NASCAR as they are uh, in Dover this week as well. Do not forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus. And uh, make sure if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. You can find me on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets across round one of the NFL. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break it all down. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 